Rangers week number two of Alliance Primetime. The DA Show is dusting off the old tapes. We're doing highlights the way it used to be. It's bogus. He's lit up. My goodness. It's Mraz. And he's in for a Birmingham touchdown. It's DA. And it's caught for the touchdown. The Orlando special. The Philly special. But it's the winter. It's Alliance Primetime. And it starts now. It's week two in the Alliance. It was so good the first time around. We did it again this last weekend. Bogus. Mraz. DA has all of the ins and outs around the Alliance after two weeks and eight games. I'm even wearing makeup this time around. That's how important things have gotten in the AAF. Maybe this weekend featured the greatest game in league history, but first we begin in Birmingham. The iron, so sweet to spot the Stallions. Nine points, then the rally began. End over end punt. And now it's ripped out. The ball is free. They're chasing it, and the iron are on it in the end zone, and it's a touchdown, Birmingham. Shahid Tim Salmon swimming upstream to get the fumble recovery and get the iron rolling. And after that salmon recovery bogus, you could tell there was something fishy in the air when it came to special teams all afternoon long in Birmingham. Fumbled punts, muffed punts, missed field goals, which we'll get to in just a second. First things first, though, the Birmingham offense making good on the special teams points. Give it to Richardson. And did he get across? It is a touchdown, Birmingham. The iron has the lead of course it's a touchdown it's Trent Richardson alive and well in black and silver you know bogus did you hear about the tax increase in Birmingham I didn't it's all for the Trent Richardson revitalization project and it is off and running with three touchdowns through the first two weeks that one put his iron ahead 12-9 but but Salt Lake City had a chance to tie. The snap is good, the hold is good. Bertolette's kick is on its way, and it is no good. He hooked it left. He hooked it <laughs> left, and the iron are a couple of snaps away from getting to 2 0. Oh. Taylor Bertolette, he who walked back to <laughs> Salt Lake City. Kickers sucking the Alliance as well. That was his third missed field goal of the game. 12 9, iron win there, 2 0. Oh. The Stallions are 0 2, Sean. Yeah, it's tough, tough, tough sledding for Dennis Erickson up in the great state of Utah. And you have to wonder if going with Bertolette's going to end up being known as the mistake by Salt Lake. Get me to me. <laughs> Get me to Memphis. Mike Singletary's, Mike Singletary's team actually scored points this weekend. This is going to be Stacy and leads it. Tackle in the backfield. Cuts inside. Zach Stacy in for the touchdown. First TD of the season for Memphis. Zach Stacy making mama proud. Stacy's mom has got it going on. He scores touchdowns and we've waited so long. I didn't know there was a second verse. Uh, has expressed an 18 6 lead. On the hot shots in the fourth quarter, but 12 points, nothing for Arizona. Quick throw, complete, trying to get in the end zone, and he does. Rashad Ross, two touchdowns last week, gets the first one tonight. It's from John Walford, and he was just warming up. Third goal for Arizona. Walford to throw, complete over the middle. Tim Cook, touchdown, hot shots. Walford, I think, heard you say Jarrell Presley was MVP favorite after week one. Two big fourth quarter touchdown throws yesterday, or Saturday, excuse me. Hey, look, and you know how they're feeling in Arizona with its 2 0 start and that comeback. John Wolford and the boys, how they feeling, Bogish? Hot, hot, hot. Ole, 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 ole. No, that's it. Now we're done. <laughs> we go third verse the first time around. We should have a pre show meeting, it seems like, huh? I think Berman and TJ just winged it. Hey, look, it's week two. We're only going to get better come week uh, three. Stacy, by the way, in this 2018 loss to Arizona, first 100-yard game in AAF history. Now we're on to Sunday, a day of reckoning in San Antonio. The Apollos, the Commanders, as good of a week two matchup as you're going to get in any league in this great country. Somebody was going to lose. It wasn't San Antonio at first. <laughs> Touchdown! Kenneth Farrell takes it in. 
Kenneth, Mia, Farrow, two for two, making prime time. But all he was doing was setting up the latest rally in the Alliance. San Antonio led Orlando 29-17 late third quarter. Another 12-point lead, though, wasn't good enough. Open man, catch, touchdown, Jalen Marshall. And we are tied up. And this is exactly what I've been talking about all through training camp and into the season. When it comes to Steve Spurrier, he is now turning Garrett Gilbert and Jalen Marshall into Joe Montana and Jerry Rice. This is a tandem we will be telling our grandkids about early in the alliance. I was thinking more John Taylor just to keep ourselves under wraps. I get too excited, but you're right. It's Rice. We are Marshall when it comes to the Orlando offense. Let that one sink in. (laughs) And now some defense. A go-ahead 39-yard pick six. It's Orlando that gets to 2-0, 37-29 in San Antonio. 29,000 people in the Alamo Dome yesterday. A game of the year. I don't care if grandma was stirring her sauce. I don't care if the chicken cutlets were frying. If you weren't in front of the TV watching this game and seeing Keith Reese's Pieces Reeser return that pick six and change the whole complexion of the Alliance season now, that's a San Antonio defeat. You wonder if they can recover from out west, but the Apollos are rolling. What a win for Spurrier's crew. Last but not least, my fleet hosting the Legends of Atlanta. The road team scored first. Sims gets another snap from the shotgun, goes over the middle, caught, and touchdown, Legends! Malachi Jones, 19 yards! That's a 9-0 lead for Atlanta in San Diego. Maybe more importantly, though, no near-death experiences for Matt Sims yesterday. No, and for Matt Sims to go up 9-0, he lets you know his favorite targets, Malachi. It's Mr. Jones and me for Matt Sims in Atlanta, and they were on upset alert in San Diego early. Eh, it didn't last for too long, though. He flips it to Gardner, who gets around left end. That's a first down. That's a touchdown! An eight-yard score for Jaquan Gardner. And he wasn't done either. Gardner, five. Gardner reaching for the end zone, and he is in. A seven-yard score, his second of the fourth quarter. Say it with me, Sean. All hands on deck. All hands on deck. And I want you to check the tomatoes, check the broccolini, Mm -hmm. because the Gardner has planted himself atop that San Diego fleet running back depth chart. Boy, oh boy, that had to feel good for San San Diego and Mike Martz. It was harvest time. 104 yards, those two touchdowns. 24-12, a bountiful win for Gardner and his fleet. The first in fleet history. Atlanta's 0-2, really missing Michael Vick's non-coaching. And now, for the latest, that's just scratching the surface after week two. Across the set we go. DA, what do you got for us? Well, thanks, guys. Let's start in Memphis, where there's some real concerns about Christian Hackenberg as quarterback of the Express. 14 of 25 for 102 yards. Also caught on camera again cursing. This is two weeks in a row. It's terrible. We already had Charlie Ebersol mention that maybe there's going to have to be a seven-second delay for some players. They did not utilize that. They need that quick. Also, him being mic'd up all game long showed us some insight into why he's such a disaster. He was yelling and fighting with coaches about the plays and the hash marks they were running it from and everything else really gave you insight into why he's such a mess. Second point, Mike Singletary dropping 0-2. This man looks very sad. It's obvious around circles in the NFL, in the NFL and the AAF. When coaches are in a losing situation, they become very sad. Singletary is sad right now. That's what a lot of league sources are telling me. Number three, the halftime report for the Alliance on Saturday night had no audio. They went into the studio, no audio. They had a break out of the segment after three minutes of speaking and then come back from commercial where host Alex Flanagan said, everyone in this league is mic'd up except us. That was tough to hear. Troubling. I think that there's some frustration with some technical difficulties. Also, San Diego 24, Atlanta 12 last night, although you wouldn't know who won because both jerseys looked exactly the same. We had color on color where it was dark helmets, Dark jerseys and gray pants for both. Guys, I think if the league's going to get off the ground, we need to know which team is which. Yeah, rain didn't help either. Rain didn't help, and I think it is budgetary concerns when it comes to making white uniforms. I'm not sure San Diego or Atlanta have white uniforms. Is it possible there's only one uniform for every team? It seems to be. No, Memphis is already showing a white and a blue, and I think Orlando as well. But, yeah, definitely troubling in Atlanta and San Diego. Big markets. Get New Jersey's. 